Welcome to the Daily Word for the Season of Pentecost. Today's reading is from the book of Micah, chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. Alas for those who devise wickedness and evil deeds on their beds. When the morning dawns, they perform it, because it is in their power. They covet fields and seize them, houses and take them away. They oppress householder and house, people and their inheritance. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Now I am devising against this family an evil from which you cannot remove your necks, and you shall not walk haughtily, for it will be an evil time. On that day they shall take up and taunt son against you, and wail with bitter lamentation, and say, We are utterly ruined. The Lord alters the inheritance of my people, how he removes it from me. Among our captor he parcels out our fields. Therefore, you will have no one to cast the line by lot in the assembly of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Endless lust, endless punishments. Micah was the prophet of the southern kingdom, Judah. During the reigns of kings Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. That was around 740 to 680 BC. In 722 BC, the northern kingdom Israel was conquered by the Assyrian Empire. Thus, the threat to the survival of the southern kingdom Judah became more imminent. The Jews were very proud of their status as God's chosen people. They would scarcely accept to be ruled by foreign peoples. Even more unimaginable was that the prophets declare that it was God's purpose to punish their rebellion from God's teaching and commands. At the same time, external threats and insecurities inside their hearts. The Jews tended to grasp with tangible things just as wealth. In the dim light of hope, they would live only according to their own feelings and desires, throwing behind God's teachings and commandments through the laws of Moses and the message of the prophets. Actually, human situation has little differences across the ages. Today, the threat of war, especially the disastrous nuclear weapons, is not to be ignored easily. Today's scriptural reading is casting a lively image of the faces of those desiring for more wealth and power. The bed is a place for rest, whilst these people take no rest. They are plotting evil all night long. They would use all kinds of means to seize other people's fields, houses, and inheritance. They did so not out of coerciveness, but out of their covetousness. Some may wonder whether they did not know it was wrong to do so. Actually, we always do what we shouldn't do. On the one hand, we follow our own desires, while on the other hand, we think that 
we could escape the judgment with luck. But God's judgment and punishment would come eventually to the evil doers. Those exploiting others would one day be exploited, and their evil plots would fail. Moreover, we go to bed at night. We think that what we did in the dark and in our minds would not be discovered. However, things would not be uncovered, and those satire would be sung to disclose the evil doers. Let us have a time of reflection. In this time of end of times in chaos, how would we, brothers and sisters in the church, help each other to resist the world's values and our own desires? What are the good things? Through God's punishments, in this present time, how would you leave us, sons of light, or daughters of light, and to carry out God's teachings? A prayer from the book Sarum Breviary, one o eight five. Let us pray. We beseech you, O Lord, let our hearts be graciously enlightened by your holy radiance, that we may serve you without fear in holiness. And righteousness all the days of our life, that so we may escape the darkness of this world, and by your guidance attain the land of eternal brightness. Through your mercy, O blessed Lord, who does live and govern all things, world without end. Amen.